Yeah, disappointing loss um, at home. Give Indiana credit, Coach Allen and his staff did a great job of having their guys prepared. We made it a four quarter game, something that we haven't done um, around here this year, uh, but didn't make the plays when we had opportunities to. You know, we had two drives there at the end uh, to win the ball game, and, and we didn't get it done. Uh, ended those two drives with turnovers, which again, uh, good teams don't beat themselves. And we continue to do it, and I've got to get us fixed. Um, you know, I thought our defense did a better job in the second half, obviously giving up the points they gave up in the first half to hold this, this team, which was an explosive offense, to seven points. You know, our defense gave us a chance to win the ball game, and we got it to the fourth quarter, which you know, I'm proud of that. Uh, you know, our guys have had a tendency to play to the scoreboard, and today I thought we matured and maybe grew up a little bit in terms of not allowing the circumstances to affect how we play. And, and today I thought even when we were down, there wasn't a time where I felt like we did last week against Purdue where our guys kind of played to the scoreboard or to the circumstances. And so we're making steps, uh, we're taking steps forward that way, but ultimately we've got to win ball games. That's what it's about. And uh, nobody cares about the injuries. Nobody cares about how young and the guys that are playing. We, the guys that are out there are good enough, and so they're old enough. And we've, as a coaching staff, uh, we've got to find a way to get these guys to play to the level they need to play, especially in critical situations like we had here at the end of the game, uh, to come away with wins. And, and we'll continue to work hard and diligently at doing that. Um, and you know, with that, I'll open up to some questions. Terp Talk is brought to you by Viner Four Gates Consulting. Call Viner Four Gates for all of your IT needs. In the D.C., Baltimore area, you could reach us at 301-251-2900 or on the web at www.vinerforgates.com. The Jackler's Law Group's successes have resulted in many distinguished awards, including Best Personal Injury Trial Law Firm USA, Maryland's Personal Injury Attorney of the Year twice, and Super Lawyers designation every single year. We succeed because we're willing to try cases, and insurance companies know it. That's why their claim reps often grumble they pay us more in settlements than any other lawyers. You deserve a great lawyer. If you've been hurt in a car, truck, or train crash, call 855-BIG-DOG-1. Coach, in the first half, what do you feel IU's offense was able to take advantage of? To jump back? Well, I mean, again, it's been the same kind of uh, recipe uh, to get us in the uh, spread game, four, four wide outs, open formation sets, uh, uh, and then to try to read the coverage, whether it's man or zone, and, and find the matchups that they wanted to uh, attack. And that's where you know I feel Coach Hoke and the staff did a better job at halftime. Um, not allowing them to read our mail. Uh, you know, they did some things in formations where with the back being outside at the number one slot, you know, we call them indicator formations where they can read man or zone and then they try to take advantage of uh, the man coverage when it showed. So we did a better job of disguising things, I thought, in the second half to where they couldn't read our mail. And uh, we got some stops found in there in the second half. Mike, in terms of Piggy, uh, obviously made, made some plays to get you guys back in the game, but in the end with the interception, is that just a guy trying maybe too hard to make a play or just not seeing what, what, what he has? I mean, you know, that play with the, the way the coverage was, uh, from what I saw my advantage, it was a poor decision, obviously. Um, you know, I, I can't fault Piggy for the competitor that he is, but obviously quarterbacks have to be able to win games throwing the football when needed. And, uh, right now, we've got to get him coached to the point where he can go out and function and give us a chance in the throwing game. There's no doubt the kid is a competitor. Uh, he'll, he'll leave it out on the field for his teammates, uh, but quarterbacks will be judged by how they take care of the football, how they score points, and again, winning on third down in obvious passing situations. And so, you know, we'll continue to coach him up. Um, we'll get some healthy guys back next week, I'm hoping, and uh, we'll, we'll put the best quarterback out there that we can to give us a chance to win next week in Minnesota. Row, hey, Coach, how you doing? Um, I thought Antoine Brooks had an incredible game. What were your impressions of him? You know, the thing with Antoine, he always flies around. Um, I, I don't think he played a perfect game. I thought there were some eye, 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 uh, eye violations in the first half where we were in man coverage and he gave up a, a couple of plays. But again, much like most of these guys, he won't compete. And that's what I love about Antoine. He'll leave it out on the field. And even the series where he made the mistake, he came back and made the play with the interception there. Uh, 
as they were uh, driving down the field. So again, I know that kid will give us 110% every chance he goes, every chance he gets. He continues to be a really good leader for us, and uh, we can win with guys like Twan and his effort. Uh, Coach, Jim Moore once uh, laughed off a reporter for talking playoffs, but this is the second consecutive year that Maryland has lost a game to Indiana that could help the team become bowl eligible. Now you face an important three-game gauntlet at Minnesota, at home against Michigan, and at Columbus. How do you get these guys prepared to win three games out of their final five and possibly make a bowl game? So we don't really worry about totals and results. I mean, we're going to worry about the next game. And, you know take care of the next one and then after that we'll move to the game after so you know to look at things in totality and to be result oriented that's not where we're going to go that's not how this team is built uh, that's not how I coach so we're going to take it one game at a time and the next game is Minnesota. Um, I think you talked about this after Temple too but teaching the guys how to um, better handle and, and win the close games and what do you feel like is missing in those last three four minutes? I mean, it's execution. Uh, I mean, you know, we start a drive uh, there with four minutes left and we get the ball pulled out. And again, no, there's, there's a lot of blame to be passed along. So this game is, again, I'm not blaming this game on uh, the turnovers there at the end of the game, because obviously the game of football is a culmination of the, all the plays. But, you know, to have a ball pulled out there at the, the first two minute opportunity we had, just that's fundamental. I mean, we've got to keep protecting the ball all the way down to the ground. So. Uh, for us, it's just execution. Um, again, we got the game to the fourth quarter. This has kind of been an Achilles heel for us, being able to execute when we need to in critical situations. And again, that's on coaching. That's on me. I've got to get these guys to be able to play in critical situations and perform at the level that they're capable of in critical times. So, you know, I'll continue to work to, to have these guys understand situational football, understand the importance of doing things exactly right, especially in critical situations. And, uh, we'll keep coaching through it. The back On the pass to Mabry where he stepped out at the one, was that a toss to Javon that the defense took away, or is that actually a pass play that was called? It was a play action pass off of a, the same play we've run two or three times in the game, so it's a complimentary play to what we've run earlier in the game. Um, you know, the tight end position was used heavily through the first few games and then, you know, wasn't really as present over the last couple of weeks. What were you seeing from Indiana to, you know, make that position uh, a bigger part of today's game? You know, I don't understand those questions sometimes with the tight end. I mean, we, we, we have tight ends involved in all the passing games. You know, getting the ball to people is predicated by coverage, not necessarily by uh, the position. You know, we go into every game with wanting to target our best players and our tight ends have been great players for us. Uh, but we ask them to do a lot. So the success they have, whether it's blocking for the run game, and we had some explosive runs today uh, to, the, uh, to, to credit our tight ends and their blocking. But you know, today our tight ends were able to make plays. We, we chart and track those guys, and they are guys that have the ability to. Um, so it was good to see them make plays today. Mike, talk about the game uh, chance Campbell had uh, in terms of making plays and, and also the, the penalty on Davis that sort of led to getting more opportunity. Yeah, you know, even going into this game, you know, we, we chance we moved chance into the starting position. He was actually a game captain, and again, you know, when we have opportunities where guys aren't producing and playing the game the way we want it to be played, we're always try to c c uh, create competition. And so we did that at the inside linebacker spot where Chance and Isaiah started, and we had Ace coming off the bench. Um, obviously, not a smart play by Isaiah in the targeting, a late hit, and those are just. Uh, just bad plays on our part. And so, you know, once we lost Isaiah, we were already thin with Fanage being out. Um, it created a, a, the opportunity, obviously, for Chance to play. And we usually rotate those guys through. But I thought Chance had a good game for us. I think he continues to grow and show the leadership you want to see out of that position. He'll be a good football player for us. Um, apart from Javon's uh, turnover, but the way you guys were able to lean on him today without Anthony, I know we've always kind of talked about them as kind of one one B, but how much comments you have in the position group and the way they were, particularly Javon was able to run the ball um, without Anthony there. Yeah, I mean, that's, again, going into the season, it was a position of strength for us. Obviously, we continue to be depleted there with the injuries. Uh, going into this game, because of what the strength of our team is, we wanted to rely on being able to run the ball, and because of some of the stuff we've done with RPOs, 
getting favorable numbers in the box to be able to run the football. And again, Javon's a big time playmaker, has the ability to hit the home run, um, does everything we ask of him. He plays a bunch of plays for us. He returns kicks. He's a backup punt returner, uh, covers kicks. So again, uh, I give that kid credit in terms of uh, the effort and the way he plays the game. And you know, it's good to have a guy like him when you lose an Anthony McFarland to be able to step in and, and pick up the production. Coach, do you believe that earlier in the fourth quarter, had your defense got some more stops, that the outcome might have been a little different than what it was? No, I mean, again, I give our defense credit in the second half. I mean, they, they held them to seven points, and that was a team that has shown the ability to be explosive on offense. And so uh, I thought Coach Hogan and those guys did a better job in the second half. And again, I think the big issue was people were being able to uh, formation us and get us into uh, a spray game on defense and then try to take advantage of some space matchups. And so we made some adjustments there in the second half to not allow them to create the, the advantages they were trying to create. And, you know, they got us key stops when we needed them. You know, they got us the ball back after we fumbled it down in, the, in there in the two-minute situation, held them to a field goal. Uh, they got us the ball back there early in the uh, uh, third or fourth quarter, I think. So, um, again, all, it's an all-around team loss um, and, and just disappointing that we don't execute in critical situations to be able to, to get, give these guys a win. Time for two more players in here. You're right, Patrick. Uh, Mike, uh, you've said several times this season that discipline precedes winning. Have, have you seen in your career that that's something that can come in spurts where you can make a big leap at a certain point? I'm sure the frustration level at this point on that front is pretty significant. Yeah, I mean, the penalties went down today, but they still continue to happen at inopportune times, much like turnovers. And so, again, Good teams don't beat themselves, and like you said, yes, d discipline is critical. Now, uh, being able to chart and know, you know, when it happens. Again, man, these are 18 and 22 year old kids that we're asking to do their job exactly right. And, and, and unfortunately, in this type of the generation we have, consistency isn't something that they're, that they're used to. But that's our job as a coaching staff to get the consistency. And if we're not getting it, then we've got to get people in there that will do the job at the consistency level that we need for us to win. Uh, it's a, it's a double-edged sword because we've got injuries and numbers that, that affect some of those decisions. But if there's an opportunity to make a decision to force competition or to force a guy to do things exactly how we want it to be done, we're going to do it. I mean, you know, whether it's playing some of these other these young freshmen that we've done and, and we'll continue to look for ways and being creative to find a way to fix it. Coach, uh, flashing back to the Indiana touchdown right before halftime. For the second straight week, how tough is it to get a touchdown right before you enter the locker room? And is that kind of? Yeah, I mean, you, you, you never want to, I mean, obviously allow an offense to steal a touchdown, and that's what happened. Again, you know, um, we were in great position. Um, the, the receiver made a hell of a catch. The quarterback made a perfect throw. And again, it's man coverage. And if you look at the playbook, when we do those things, we shrink what they can do. And now it's a matter of us being able to execute our assignments. And, you know, we didn't have the pass interferences today like we've had in the past. We've been in good position. But again, it's our job to find a way to get these guys to be able to make these plays because people are making them on the other side of the ball against us. And so, um, you know, we'll continue to work to uh, figure it out. And we'll, uh, we'll show back up here Monday, ready to get, uh, ready to prepare for uh, Minnesota. Thanks, Coach. Well,